Hi there YouTubers and 3D Studio Max lovers, welcome, welcome to my 3D corner. In today's episode we're going to discuss about rendering and how can you achieve a rendering in 3D Studio Max. So in today's episode we're going to talk about the render setup and the common tab. So without further ado, let's move in front of the computer. Let me start uh, 3D Studio Max 2022. For the purpose of this uh, lesson, uh, we are going to need a model. So we're going to use the 3D model that we modeled in the last lesson. For the ones who don't have the 3D model or because they didn't want to follow that lesson or because they already know how to model something like that, they can use whatever 3D model they have or they can go to my Patreon and download the 3D model from there. I'm gonna hide this for now. I'm gonna open my latest scene from the 3D modeling techniques where we as you can see uh, this is what we did the last time uh, maybe it's easier to change the layout to like this So it's easy. To go to the rendering setups, it's very easy. You go to rendering and render setup, which is here. This is the render setup. You can also open it by clicking the F10 on the keyboard. So currently we're using Corona Render uh, 7 Hotfix 1. And today we're gonna talk about the common tab. In the common tab, here we have the settings for our rendering. First of all, these are all the sub tabs. So we have common parameters, email notifications, scripts, and assigned render. I'm gonna start with the last one, with the assigned renderer, because here you assign which kind of renderer do you wanna use to render your scene. The first one is production, the material editor, and the active shape. In production, we need to tell 3 Studio Max which kind of render we're going to use. By default, 3 Studio Max is using Arnold, but he also has Art Renderer, Quicksilver, Scanline, which is the first renderer that uh, 3 Studio Max ever had, and View File Renderer. In today's, we're gonna use the uh, Corona render, so I don't need to click anything because it's already in there. For the material editor, we're gonna use also Corona render. So you click on this button, it's already in there because these two are locked together, as you can see. And for the active shade, I can use the scan line or the active shade from Arnold. I'm gonna use the scan line. So this is the tab where you assign your render. So when you start the project, the first thing that you can do is to go here, assign the renderer, uh, use whatever render engine you want, and then at the end you can use you can save everything as default. So so next time when you're gonna open the 3D Studio Max, it's gonna already load all your render engine and material editor, active shade and so on. Then we go to the common parameters. So in the common parameters, you need to tell 3D Studio Max what he needs to render because the program doesn't know. The time output, how is it called? It's called, uh, right now it's put on single, which means that if I'm going to hit render, he's gonna render only one frame. Okay but I can also tell the program that I want to, for the program to render all the renders from starting from zero to 100. The active elements, active time segments are these ones. So this timeline shows it's used for animations. And for example, if I move uh, one table, for example, this one, I'm gonna leave only one and I can create an animation, for example. It's super easy. We're gonna create an easy two steps animation. I'm gonna move this table from one point. I'm making the gizmo bigger. I already told you in the first lessons how to do that with using the plus and the minus from the keyboard. So this is in the zero point. I can move it here, for example. I can click on the animation on the auto key, yeah. I'm on the zero frame. I'm gonna go to the last frame, 100, and I'm gonna move this 
here. Now I'm gonna stop the animation. What's going to happen to just to Maxi understand that the table was in the frame zero in, a, in the position here with these coordinates and in the frame 100 the table has new coordinates. So what he's going to do, he's going to split the coordinates from the first frame to the last frame by 100 because we have 100 frames so he's gonna split this in by 100 and he's gonna move that table in the viewport as you can see now we have an animation here yeah? this is very easy it's the purpose of this is only to show you how to uh, what's going to happen when you render from 0 to 10 so let me go back to my common render setup so when I'm clicking on this on the active time segment from 0 to 100 what Studio Studio Max is going to do is going to start rendering each frames from 0 to 100. This is very useful, sometimes you can create animations with this, but also some other times you can use one camera in a scene that you animate and you render different angles from that scene. Yeah, this is quite useful. Then every end frame is 1, which means that it's going to render from 0 to 100 every one frame. If I'm putting here 10, it's going to render from 10 to 10. So it's going to go 0, 10, 20, 30, 40, and so on. Yeah? So this is very important because sometimes you, yeah, you want to create a very fast animation. You just move from 0 to in 100 keyframes, you render only 10 frames. So you show the short animation and this way you can show to your client or to your boss uh, what how it's going to look but in much faster way the third thing is range which means that for example if i want from my animation that i have here i can render only starting from the 20 going to 30 so i can put here 20 to 30 and when i'm gonna hit render he's gonna start directly with the frame 20 and he's gonna end on the firm 30. The last one, it's called frames. Here you can say exactly which frames do you wanna render. So for example, I'm gonna put one, 35, 37, 100. And I can also tell him that I want to render also from frame 35, for example, to frame 50. So what's going to happen now, he's going to start rendering the frame 1, then the two frame 35, then the frame 37, the frame 100, and then he's going to do all the frames between 35 and 50. Okay, so the next thing is area to render. It's called, it's view in this case, so this means that when I hit render, it's going to render exactly this view. And then if I choose selected, I need to select some objects in the scene and it's going to render only those objects so for example i'm gonna select the floor i'm gonna hit f9 which is the shortcut and it's rendering only the floor as you can see if i select the floor and this table and i hit render it's gonna render the floor and the table in the same time uh, this is very useful for the example when you already render your scene and you need to do some changes and in some parts of the scenes for example you're changing the color of the table or you're changing the color of the floor then you can re-render only the floor not the whole scene and you can overlay the floor or whatever you render in that uh, scene in Photoshop so this is very very useful when you make a lot of changes to your project then you have the region render which is it's gonna show this this you can grab it from this point and make it bigger or smaller and it's just going to region render that square as you can see this is all also very useful I'm gonna stop it then we have a crop and is going to create a big render only from that small crop okay it's quite interesting and blow up as you can see is keeping the same dimensions and the same ratio from this part here from the width and 72 yeah from the output size click render and it's rendering only that 
Then the next thing is the output size, which is the how big the render is going to be. You can use already a pre-made or a 35 millimeters camera. As you can see, this is a 35. Uh, these are different ratios for, for the same thing from famous cameras like a 70 millimeters IMAX, Panavision, Vista Vision. These are all kind of different different ratios for for the rendering. So you can use one of these if you want the preset, so HDTV for example, or what you, else you can do, you can also click on one of these buttons here and you change the resolution right away, or you can just write, if you go to custom, you can just write, I don't know, whatever uh, resolution you want to have, for example, 160 by a square one, yeah? And I hit render and it's just gonna render a square that is 1600 by 1600 right i'm gonna stop this close it uh, you can the this is the aspect ratio you can have here like 1.5 with a save frame you can choosing here from perspective click on the perspective and show save frame it's gonna show you exactly what you're going to render with these yellow lines yeah so then you have the pixel aspect uh, then you have some options where you can say like okay I don't want to render the atmospheric or I want to render the atmospheric, the effect, the displacement, the video render to fields and so on. Force to side advanced lightning, this needs to be on. Bitmap performance and memory options coming from here. This is for the optimization, uh, render frame in new window and so on. And the one and the most important one is render output save files. You click on this button here, you go on the render output and say test, test render. This is the name of my render that I'm going to have. Here I can choose the format of my render. For example, if I want to render a video, I can choose an RV. If I want to choose an image, it, I can use a BPM, I can use a HDRI, JPEG, PNG, and so on. These are all the formats that you can use to render your images. So I'm gonna just choose save. Oh, I didn't choose anything. I'm gonna choose JPEG. In this case, I'm gonna use save. Here is the quality of the image. I want the best quality, a large file, and the smoothing of the image, maximum. Okay. Now I can just render and yeah, it's just rendering the image. At the end of the render time, is uh, going to save the image. Let me check here. It's already saved. See, in the moment that you choose to stop, it's going to save the image that you already had in there because the render, this render can go over and over and forever because it doesn't have a limit right now so it can go until you stop it or it's ending the hit parameters then you can have an email notification where you need to have a server uh, where it's gonna send an email notification for each render that you, it's finished then you have scripts here you can use your own scripts or scripts from the internet you just close it you just choose enable and you can add your own scripts and of course the last part that we already discussed is the assigned render so these are the common parameters for rendering an image so to be short and first you need to know how many renders you're gonna render if it's one or a multiple or a range of renders if you render a view or you render a region and so on the area to render the output size, which is very important, you need to know exactly how big the render you want to have or you, it's going to be. And the most important part, the render output, where it's going to save and which kind of file it's going to be. So this is the first part. I hope you liked it. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Uh, there is more stuff to come. And in the second part, I'm going to discuss about the Corona render scene setup. Okay, so this was today's... Okay, so in today's episode we discuss about the render setup in the common tab. So here you can here you learn how to save your file, where to save your file, 
the settings for your file and so on. If you liked the today's episode, please don't forget thumbs up if you find the information useful. Also, please don't forget to subscribe. It's really gonna help my channel. And not the last thing, please let me know in the comments which part you didn't understand so I can explain further in the next episodes those parts. And, and in the next episode, we're going to discuss about the Corona render settings. So please don't forget to subscribe and see you next time.